Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life and in this video I'm going to teach you how to wire an electrical power distribution panel for a camper van. I like this solution better than a separate DC fuse block and AC breaker box because it's a nice neat all-in-one package that simply looks good after it's installed, which makes hiding it away in a closet or in the garage of your camper van unnecessary. All parts considered, it's also about the same price as the alternative as well. So let's get started. This power distribution panel is designed to be mounted in an 8.25 by 8.5 inch rectangular hole. And since I'm not actually installing this in a van, I'm just going to make a little mock-up out of some scrap wood to make it super official for you. Fit the distribution panel into the hole and let's start wiring. The right side of the box is designated for the DC side of your system. This will be powered directly from your battery bus bar. The left side of the box is designed for your 120 volt AC side of your system. This will be powered from the AC output side of your inverter. Let's start with wiring the DC side of this box. Knock out three or four of the plastic knockouts on the back of the box with a screwdriver and bring your positive and negative wires from the battery into the box. Please disconnect power to these wires before working with them. There are two big screw lugs at the top of this circuit board. Your positive wire will go in the left lug and your negative wire will go in the right lug. Now if you were to reconnect power to the battery, you'd have power coming into the DC distribution panel and have power at all of these fuse holders. Now when you're ready to start running the wires to your 12 volt appliances, all you'll have to do is bring your duplex wire into the box from the back and attach the positive wire to any of these lugs here. I recommend starting at the top. Simply strip a quarter inch from your wire, loosen the screw, insert the stripped wire, and retighten the screw. Now there's a little clip on this board that if you pull it toward the bottom of the box, it will release the circuit board and move it out of the way so you can access the negative bus bar a little easier. The negative wires from the duplex wire you just ran will go down to the negative bus bar and attach in the same manner under these screws. Strip a quarter inch from your wire, loosen the screw, insert the stripped wire, and retighten the screw. Give the wire a little tug to make sure it's nice and secure. Now you're going to repeat this process until you've added all of the 12 volt circuits you need. Keep track of which wires go to what appliances as there's a label on the distribution panel trim ring where you'll want to make note of which fuse is which. Now we're not covering DC appliance wire sizes and fuse size choices in this video, but there's more info on that in the description. Reclip the circuit board back down and get ready to move on to the AC side of the panel. On the AC side of the box, you've got three different bus bars. The bottom two are neutral and ground, with the ground in the back and the neutral in the front. Up top is the positive breaker bus bar. Making sure that there's no power coming from your inverter or shore power, bring in the three conductor wire from your inverter's AC out into the distribution box via the knockout on the back of the box. Cut the sheath of this wire about four to six inches back, and then strip back a half inch of insulation off of each wire. The green wire goes to the ground bus bar, and the white wire goes to the neutral bus bar. There's already a 120 volt plug built into the back of the box, and the green and the white wire should already be connected up to the respective bus bars. Now you need your AC breaker. There are a few different types of breakers that will work with this box, but I'm using the Square D Home and Square D Home Tandem breakers. For the breaker coming from the inverter into this box is a single pole home breaker. There's a screw on the bottom of it. Loosen that screw, insert the black wire under the washer, and retighten the screw. Give the wire a tug to make sure that it's nice and secure. Remove this screw and retaining clip and set them aside. Clip the bottom of the breaker into the bottom rail of the box and then tilt the breaker up so that the positive breaker bus bar spline goes into the slot in the middle of the back of the breaker. Now reinstall your retaining clip. Now, if you had power to this wire and turned on this breaker, this whole positive breaker bar would be energized. Next, I'm going to show you how to add a breaker so that you can run a wire out to your various 120 volt AC appliances and outlets. Bring in your wire that will run to those 120 volt appliances or outlets, strip back four to six inches of sheathing, and strip the insulation off the last half inch of wire. The green goes to the ground bus bar, and the white goes to the neutral bus bar. And then you're gonna grab your Square D Home Tandem Breaker. Now this is a space saving breaker allowing you to have multiple circuits on only one breaker bus bar space. Loosen one of the screws on the bottom of this breaker and insert the black wire under the washer under the screw and tighten that screw down. Tug on the wire to make sure it's nice and secure. Clip the bottom of the breaker into the bottom rail of the box and then tilt the breaker up so that the positive breaker bus bar spline goes into the slot in the middle of the back of the breaker. Now repeat this process for as many 120 volt AC circuits as you plan on having. 
Now you can insert screws into the box that hold it to your cabinet or wherever you're mounting this. Reinstall the trim ring starting with the top two screws. Now, if you haven't done it already, you can install your DC fuses. They just push into place exactly the same as the ones you'd find in your car. Now it would also be a good time to label those various fuses for what they go to. And that's all there is to it. There's some more information and resources about this process in the blog post, which you may find handy, and you can find that here. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below, hit that thumbs up if this was helpful, and subscribe if you want to be notified when I make more videos like this one. And I will see you in the next video.